Thermal takes the Tower 200. The two headline features, it supports Mini ITX along with a full-size graphics card. And yet we've installed a Micro ATX motherboard in this allegedly Mini ITX case. Clearly, the Tower 200 is part of Thermaltake's The Tower range of products. At the top of the stack, we have the £300 The Tower 900, which supports EATX motherboards with two 480mm radiators, 12 or more fans, and a huge number of storage drives. Then we have the £200 The Tower 500, also supporting EATX with 360 plus 280mm radiators, up to 11 fans, and also supporting a stack of drives. At the bottom of the tree, we have the 83 pound The Tower 100, which supports a mini ITX motherboard with a single 120mm radiator, up to three fans, and as many as four storage drives. The Tower 200 sells for 110 pounds, either in snow white or in black. We saw three versions of this case in different shades of green at Computex of this year. Sadly, those colors are not yet available. When we saw the Tower 200 at Computex, we were told it supports Micro ATX. However, the specification definitely says Mini ITX. We'll come to that when we get inside the case. Leaving aside the motherboard form factor for a moment, this case supports a 120 or 140 mm cooler in the roof and a 240 or 280 cooler in the side. In addition, you can populate the case with plenty of fans. It supports a full ATX power supply and it supports a decent amount of storage. Where the Tower 100 was very much on the small side, the Tower 500 is large and the Tower 900 is huge, this case has a fair amount of potential. Let's remove the panels. Notice no tools. Front glass pops loose, doesn't fall, lifts out. Top panel pops off, full mesh. The filter is clipped in place, so I think you could wash that quite easily or vacuum clean it, but you're not gonna be separating it from that top walls panel. That panel simply pulls loose, as we saw at Computex when Thermal Mike was giving us a demonstration. The Tower 100, the top panel was screwed down and that was really unnecessary. Side panel simply pops off and out with the dust filter. The other side same deal. The back panel, magnetic dust filter panel simply pops off, complete with a 140mm fan which is supplied with the case. In the roof of the case we have the second 140mm fan, and in the floor of the case another dust filter. So we can have air passing up through the case and out the top, and we can choose to use the side either in intake or exhaust. Graphics card is going to hang here, so depending on the nature of your graphics card and whether it passes air through, might determine whether you want the side to be intake or exhaust. We suspect exhaust. Thermaltake makes a point that the Tower 200 supports a mini RTX motherboard and a full length graphics card up to RTX 4090. And that is the reason we have this clamp. To grip the graphics card so a built system can be easily shipped. In other words, system integrated territory rather than you and I territory. I ask you, how often do you ship a PC with a graphics card installed? You can easily remove this bracket. There are three screws around the back. If you want to move from Mini ITX to Micro ATX, you will need to remove that bracket. So I ask you, which is more important to you? Support for your graphics card or the ability to install Micro ATX? You won't be shocked to hear. I have views on this subject. Let us take a glance at these two motherboards. This Mini ITX Gigabyte B650i Aorus Ultra, priced around the £250 mark, supports AMD AM5 DDR5 memory. It is high end and it is hugely compact. A few years ago, you could think of Mini ITX as a really cut down ATX board, so you'd lose a load of features. These days, that's just not the case. Mini ITX is complicated because it's very compact. You have to put the VRMs on board. And then you come to things like storage. So SATA, you're obviously connecting the drives through cables to ports on board. M.2, on the other hand, has to be on the board itself. Funnily enough, 
this ITX board actually illustrates even that point. We have a number of dongles. This handling front panel headers, so power button reset and the two activity lights, also a fan header, and four SATA connections. If you don't want to use SATA with this board, you can simply park that dongle. We also have a USB dongle, and we have another fan dongle because the connections on the board itself are absolutely tiny. If we remove this heatsink, we reveal the M.2. In the heatsink, we have a small active fan. You can just see the edge of it there. Flip to the back of the board and you can see there's another M.2 which is under the motherboard backplate. There's a lot of hardware packed into a very small space. The board as a result is expensive, particularly as it's never going to be mass market. You're paying something like £250 for this Gigabyte ITX board. On the other hand, this previous generation MSI Mag B560M mortar Wi-Fi sold for something like £120 and you can see it is an ATX board minus some expansion slots. It's Intel LGA1200, so we're going back to Rocket Lake pre Alder Lake, DDDR4, loads of space for the VRM heatsink. It's basically got all the features you require, provided you don't want multiple expansion cards. It's just a bit shorter than an ATX board. And it's worth pointing out, if we install this RTX 4080 from Gigabyte in the Mag Mortar motherboard, you can reach the headers and connectors on the foot of the board. With the Gigabyte B650i, you can see the graphics card is practically larger than the motherboard. Now, it's overshadowing the end of the board, but there is nothing there apart from that graphics slot. And that is part of the reason why Gigabyte has been forced to offload a load of the connections to these dongles. So the board itself is very small, but by the time you install all the hardware that you require, it doesn't really end up quite as small as the 170mm by 170mm form factor suggests. I like Mini ITX quite a lot actually, but I can see that Micro ATX has a huge amount to recommend itself, both in terms of ease of installation and also price. Enough with the theory, let's get on and put some hardware inside the Tower 200. We're starting with the Gigabyte B650i Aorus Ultra Mini ITX motherboard, and we have a Ryzen 7 7700X processor, and this Thermaltake Tough Ram XG RGB D5 rated at 6000 mega transfers. That's plenty of hardware in a compact package. Let's install it in the Tower 200 and see how it looks. And we can agree, that looks neat enough. Now what if for graphics we weren't using an RTX 4080? What if we were using something like this old GTX 1080? Well that's okay, but now we've got this huge hole in the power supply shroud and that's no good. So we have this blanking plate. And now we can install our graphics card, just like so. But let's park that idea. To install the RTX 4080, we actually need to take off this side panel to gain proper access. And there we have it, the foundations for a mini ITX build with a full-size graphics card. Obviously we need the cooler on the right hand side and the power supply, but we're most of the way there. But what would it look like if instead we go for micro ATX rather than mini ITX? Moving on to the MSI Mag B560M mortar Wi-Fi. We have a Core i9-11900K processor and some tough RAM DDR4 3600 in racing green. And we can agree this case would look so much more interesting in one of those shades of green that we saw at Computex. I said in the introduction that installing this micro ATX board in the Tower 200 means I have to remove this bracket. That's not actually quite correct. There is in fact a couple of millimeters of clearance. However, I am going to remove this bracket just to give myself a bit more working room. Before I get to that, how can I install a micro ATX motherboard in a mini ITX case? The explanation is dead straightforward. This is a micro ATX case. We have the correct holes in the motherboard tray and in the accessory pack, we have a standoff installer, extra standoffs and extra motherboard screws. We have all the hardware we require to install this motherboard. So let's do that. 
with the graphics card clamp removed and the extra standoffs installed, we can slide the motherboard into place. And with the motherboard secured, we can install the RTX 4080 graphics card. Have to say, I am perplexed this is being pushed as a mini ITX chassis, when to my mind it is clearly micro ATX. Before we get busy with the cooler and the power supply, let's take a look at storage. So around the back, we can install two drives on this plate which sits behind the motherboard tray. There's something slightly odd if you look closely, so we can install either two three and a half inch drives or two two and a half inch SATA SSDs. That much is fairly conventional. The curious thing is we've also got, if you look closely, mounting holes for a cooling fan 120, 140, which therefore would sit directly behind the motherboard tray. But the thing is this back panel also has a 140 mil fan installed. So it looks to me as a thermal tech basically changed their mind. We have a stamping which can be used to install a fan, but don't do that, instead storage. The other thing, if you choose to install SSDs on this rear panel, that's absolutely fine. But if you wish to install hard drives instead, you do not have enough space for this fan. So that has to come off. Once we remove that lower cover, we have access to a conventional SSD mount, which would work like that. These other lower covers come off so you can unclip and clean the dust filters, but also this allows you to install the optional LCD panel that Thermaltake supplies for this model. Priced at £99. And here we see the Tower 200 with three and a half inch hard drives in the rear, also SSDs in that position and down in the side mounts. Midway through this review, I've received a second delivery from Thermaltake. The first delivery having the Tower 200 case and some bits and pieces you haven't yet seen, power supply and cooler among others. The three things in this delivery, we have the optional LCD display, which as I've mentioned is £100. And looks like that. Some DDR5 memory, this is rated at 6200 mega transfers rather than the 6000 mega transfers I've already shown you. I'm not using DDR5 memory in the event, I'm actually using DDR4, so we'll park that. And then we have this. Now, this is mildly embarrassing, but there's a little bit of a story to what's in this box. It says, Thermaltake Best Media Award Kit Guru, signed by Kenny Lin, who is chairman and CEO and founder of Thermaltake, and it's dated May 2023, i.e. Computex of this year. Kit Guru's relationship with Thermaltake has taken a really unexpected turn over the past few years. You may recall some little while back we had a falling out with Thermaltake. I reviewed some memory and that didn't go down well with our rep and we had a bit of back and forth and we put up a second video essentially saying we're standing by our first video. That was pretty much that and then things went quiet for a little while and then out of the blue we were offered the Tower 100 as a world exclusive review. We didn't ask for it, we were very happy to accept it. Who wouldn't take a world exclusive? The case was perfectly fine and the deal was just entirely unexpected. It was, we'll send you the Tower 100, you review it, and once your review has gone live, we'll send out samples to other people. It was as exclusive as you get. Thank you, Thermaltake, we said at the time. Since then, we've met Thermaltake at uh, CES and Computex a number of times. We've chatted to Kenny Lin in person, though you've never actually seen him on camera at Kit Guru. Uh, after he doesn't rep the products, he reps the company. And that's all fine. And then at Computex this year, uh, we had a number of events with Thermaltake, one of which was at the Thermaltake Bicycle Store. Did you know Thermaltake has a bicycle store in Taipei? I bet you didn't. I certainly didn't till this year. During uh, lockdown for the thing we don't talk about, 
Turns out that Kenny is a keen cyclist and he decided cycle stores not so great. I'll open a proper cycle store. So he did. And that's the tie up between products such as the cycle desk that we saw at CES of this year and at Computex of this year. Kenny likes bicycles. So we're at the cycle store for some news and they were showing off the CTE 750 case, a case I had reviewed before Computex. So I was sitting there going, well, what else are you showing us? And they said, oh, no, no, you, you were the first to review the CTE 750. I said, I, I didn't know that. I know I was quite early. No, no, you were the first. They said, oh, why don't you tell us? And then they said, outside for a group photo. Okie dokie. So about 50 of us stepped out on the pavement in the sun, photographer up a stepladder. So, and as I was walking past Kenny to join the group, at the front with me for a photo. An entirely unexpected turn. So, the honest truth of the situation is, as a Brit, I would happily ignore this award. It's culturally a bit peculiar. On a personal level, I have to say thank you, Kenny. It's very kind of you. Uh, it's entirely unasked for, and I don't truly know what I'm going to do with it. I mean, I guess I'll put it on the side there, and it will sit out a camera shot for here evermore. The power supply for this build, Thermaltech Tough Power GF, 1200 watts of gold rated PSU, sells in the UK for 190 pounds. Fully modular, just as you'd expect, and supports 12 volt high power. Air can flow in from the bottom and it's fully filtered, so it makes sense to have the intake downwards. Install the bracket on the power supply. Before we install the cables, let's just offer it up. Got heaps of space. Cables. 12 volt high power. Main 24 pin. One of the two EPS connectors. Second EPS. And SATA, which we'll be using for the liquid cooler. Fun thing is the cables are clearly the correct length if you have a full size case. In this instance, we've got a very small case. Next step is to tidy up the cables. It's a slightly fiddly process to tidy up the cables, but really not at all bad. And interestingly around the back, well, they're using the corners of the case as cable channels. And then you have these rigid plastic clips that just snap into place to retain the cables neatly at the sides. I haven't seen that approach used before and it works well. Plenty of space in the floor of the case. I think we should install this somewhat expensive LCD accessory. £99 in a case that only costs very slightly more. And then a USB connection to control and power the display. The motherboard is rotated with the rear I.O. on the top. And that means our internal USB header is there on the side rather than the foot of the board. Next up we have the cooler. This Thermaltake Tough Liquid 280 ARGB sink. This is a new model. Costs we think £120. Price not yet fully confirmed for the UK. As far as I can see it's a 280mm AIO as you would expect with RGB as the name suggests. However it has RGB lighting control modes on the pump body itself. I'm going to connect this ARGB header to the motherboard so I can use the motherboard controls natively. If you don't have ARGB on your motherboard or you choose not to use it, look, buttons on the pump body itself. Most unusual. To install the cooler, we remove the fan radiator rack from the right hand side. <laughs> look at the length of the cables. Thermal Take makes so many cases that are very large. This, on the other hand, is very small and is just crystal clear that design people say long cables, good. And then you get this and then we install the cooler on the rack. 
Let's see about feeding all these cables into place. This is a genuine first fit. I haven't tried installing this cooler so far. This is the cooler Thermaltake supplied me to go with this case. And we can see it is down at the bottom of the rack, just as you'd expect. I'd think a 280 cooler in a 280 rack is always gonna be just in the location it goes. And we can see that the tank at the top and the hoses are fouling the top fan. In the user guide, the top fan is clearly shown outside the frame, so we have to assume something went wrong at the factory. Moving the fan to the correct position means we can easily install the 280mm cooler. With the cooler installed and the back panel in place, and the top panel, we finish up with the front glass, And there we have it, the Tower 200 is ready for action. We ran thermal tests on the Tower 200 in four configurations, running a combination of Times by Extreme Stress Test and Cinebench R23. That gave us a power draw at the wall socket of 610 watts, the GPU pulling just over 300 watts, the CPU 160 watts with the cores running at 4.7 gigahertz. Interesting to see how the Core i9-11900K behaves after these few years. The first test, all the fans low and slow at 700 RPM, and the system sounded like this. Then we ramped all the fans to 1000 RPM, and it sounded like this. Next, we ran all the fans at 1500 RPM, and it sounded like this. Finally, all four fans at full speed, so the fans on the AIO at 2000 and the case fans at 1500 RPM, and it sounded like this. And you can see in this chart that with the fans running low and slow, the temperatures are perfectly acceptable. CPU at 79, GPU at 68. Increasing fan speed helps the temperatures by a few degrees. Increasing the fan speeds further to 1500 RPM helps the CPU temperature significantly. And then bumping the fans all the way to max makes no further difference. This tells us the Tower 200 flows air perfectly well. However, it does have the potential to get rather noisy. This video has turned out to be rather longer than I expected. So let's get to my conclusions, pros and cons. Pros, the good points. The Tower 200 is heavily perforated for good airflow and all the panels are fully filtered. You have tool free panel removal. Basically you can pull it apart just using your fingers. Another pro, there are three shades of green of this case coming along. We look forward to seeing those as they look great at Computex and we really like to see something that is different. At launch, snow white and regular black. And finally, the Tower 200 supports a full-length graphics card. Thermaltake is really keen for us to point out a full-length RTX 4090 will fit in this case. We've used a 4080, but you take their point. Cons, the negative points. The rear I.O. connection points on the top are slightly awkward. Cables come out the top, route through the back. Things like USB flash drives and such like, you'll be using the front panel connections. The cable for the rear fan requires careful routing. First time I fired up the PC, the cable was actually in the fan blades, made a heck of a noise. No damage done, but I had to take extra special care to get it right. Third, the CPU socket cutout in the motherboard tray does not line up with the motherboard, or does not line up with this motherboard. And that was slightly vexing. Finally, and this is a bit of an odd complaint. Thermaltake advertises this case as supporting mini ITX. I've demonstrated it certainly supports at least some micro ATX. Clearly, as they're calling it mini ITX, you cannot be certain that every micro ATX would just fit and fit correctly. But to my mind, micro ATX is so much easier than mini ITX and cheaper that it is the logical choice. So provided your motherboard fits this case, you're golden. The award for this case, I'm going with a worth buying, like an eight and a half out of 10. And that's purely because the rear panel connections are slightly awkward. It's the nature of the case, the updraft airflow, the rotated motherboard. 
if the access to the IO was easier, it would be a nine. But as it is, eight and a half and worth buying 